Hello, my name is Christine Di Marino, and I am a PhD student in the Center for Power Electronic Systems at Virginia Tech. The topic of this webinar presentation is the high temperature characterization of 1.2 kilovolt silicon carbide power transistors. Here's a look at the outline for this presentation. I will begin with an introduction where I will discuss the motivation and objectives of this work. I'll then go into the static and dynamic characterization of these 1.2 kilovolt silicon carbide devices. A summary of the key results of this characterization will then be provided, as well as a broader summary of this research. Conclusions will then be drawn from these key results, and the future work will be presented. Current trends in technology are increasing the requirements of power electronics. Areas such as renewable energy are continuously striving for a higher efficiency, which translates to the need for lower losses and a push towards higher voltage. Transportation electrification has many advantages, but to achieve its full potential, increased power density is essential. This can be achieved by switching at higher frequencies and reducing the cooling system size through operating at higher junction temperatures. The search for petroleum requires drilling deeper and deeper wells, where the temperatures can reach 200 degrees C or more. Consequently, power electronics that can reliably withstand these high temperatures are in great demand. The development of new semiconductor devices is the key to meeting these growing needs. In particular, wideband gap semiconductors are able to achieve these goals. This can be seen by comparing their material properties to that of silicon, which is currently the most common semiconductor material. This chart plots the critical electric field for breakdown, band gap energy, thermal conductivity, electron saturation velocity, and electron mobility of silicon, gallium nitride, and 4-H silicon carbide. We first show the properties of silicon, which is the benchmark. It can then be seen that gallium nitride has many superior material properties to that of silicon. Looking at the properties of silicon carbide, some further benefits can be observed. A higher critical breakdown field allows silicon carbide to have lower drift region resistance than silicon for a given breakdown voltage, thereby reducing the on-state losses. This critical electric field, as well as the wide band gap of silicon carbide, makes it suitable for high voltage applications. The lower conduction losses and high voltage capability of silicon carbide allows for improved system efficiencies. The wide band gap of silicon carbide also results in lower leakage currents, and the, high, and the high thermal conductivity means that this material can effectively dissipate heat. These properties allow silicon carbide devices to operate reliably under high temperature conditions. A high saturation velocity and electron mobility translate to fast switching speeds. Accordingly, gallium nitride is of great interest in very high switching frequency applications. However, of the wide band gap semiconductors, silicon carbide has shown the greatest commercial viability thus far. Consequently, extensive research has been carried out to compare the performance of silicon carbide devices to conventional silicon. Of the vast majority of work available on this topic, many, sh many have shown reduced switching losses when using silicon carbide devices instead of silicon IGBTs, as can be seen from this plot showing, lo showing losses versus switching frequency for a silicon carbide MOSFET and silicon IGBTs. Due to these lower switching losses, higher switching frequencies can be achieved when using silicon carbide. Silicon carbide has also proven to reduce the size and weight of converters, as shown by these pie charts. When using silicon carbide devices, the heat sink, capacitor, and magnetic components in the converter can all be shrunk. This is again due to the high temperature and high switching frequency capability of silicon carbide transistors. These benefits result in, low, in overall increased system efficiency, as shown by this chart in the bottom left-hand corner, where the blue curves correspond to the efficiency of a single-phase solar inverter using silicon carbide transistors while the others are for a variety of silicon devices. The curve labeled five asterisks is 
for the silicon carbide converter operating at twice the switching frequency of the silicon converters. It can thus be clearly seen that utilizing silicon carbide allows for higher switching frequency operation while still maintaining high efficiency compared to silicon converters. This table on the bottom right presents the loss breakdown for a dual interleaved bidirectional converter, where it can again be seen that the silicon carbide converter experiences reduced switching and magnetic losses. Although silicon carbide transistors have been compared to silicon, there's still much to learn about these devices. These state-of-the-art technologies feature novel characteristics and have new application possibilities. Consequently, it is necessary to fully characterize these silicon carbide devices so that we can realize their full potential. This involves testing the high temperature capability of these silicon carbide transistors, as well as characterizing different types of devices, such as MOSFETs, JFETs, and BJTs, from a variety of manufacturers under similar testing conditions so that the technologies can be compared. Characterizing a wide variety of silicon carbide transistors is significant because certain devices may be more suitable for a particular application, as was also the case for silicon devices. For these reasons, numerous researchers have dedicated their work to the characterization of silicon carbide devices. Of these works, several have explored how different types of silicon carbide transistors compare to one another. I will now quickly summarize the results of a few of these studies and identify where there was room for further research which will lead into the objectives of my work. Shown here are some of the results from one such paper where the IV curves and switching losses of six different silicon carbide transistors listed in this table are compared. Although this work evaluated a great variety of devices, limited characterization results were presented in the paper. This next paper presented more characterization results such as drain leakage current and DVD-T rate for the three silicon carbide devices shown in the table. However, the devices were only tested to, 200, to, sorry, to 80 degrees Celsius. It is desirable to characterize these silicon carbide devices to high temperatures, such as greater than 175 degrees C, since high temperature operation is one of the major advantages of silicon carbide over conventional silicon devices. This last paper characterized two silicon carbide transistors to 300 degrees Celsius, as shown by these plots of specific on resistance versus temperature and leakage current versus drain source voltage for various temperatures. However, no dynamic characterization was provided. The research presented in this webinar will consequently address these gaps. The objective of this work is therefore to characterize state-of-the-art silicon carbide transistors to high temperature. This involves valued in various types of 1.2 kV silicon carbide devices, including MOSFETs, BJTs, and normally off and normally on JFETs, from a variety of manufacturers. Many of these devices are currently commercially available. The emergence of silicon carbide transistors on the market began with the silicon carbide shocky diode released by Infineon and Cree in the early 2000s. Several years later, SemiSouth commercialized the first silicon carbide transistor, which were normally on and normally off JFETs. Although SemiSouth is no longer in business, their normally off JFET was characterizing this work in order to represent the vertical enhancement mode JFET technology. Shortly after the release of the silicon carbide JFET, Cree came out with the first silicon carbide MOSFET in 2011. This was then followed by the silicon carbide superjunction transistor from Genesic, which became commercially available just last year. In the future, we also hope to see the silicon carbide BJTs make their way into the market. With this in mind, I will now discuss the transistors that will be presented today. The characterization results of three different silicon carbide MOSFETs from Cree, Rome Semiconductor, and General Electric will be discussed. Listed in this table are the continuous drain current ratings and maximum operating temperatures of these devices according to their respective data sheets, where it can be seen that the GE MOSFET is rated for a 200 degrees C operation. Listed in the final column of this table are the diaries of the devices normalized to that of Cree's silicon carbide MOSFET. The significance of showing the size of these devices relative to one another is because, in general, a larger device size corresponds to a lower on resistance and thus lower on state losses. 
However, a larger size also results in greater parasitic capacitances and therefore higher switching losses. The characterization results of one of Fairchild's silk and carbide BJTs will also be presented in this webinar. We then also have a silicon superjunction transistor from Genesix, which is now commercially available. One of SemiSouth's normally off JFETs will also be evaluated in this work, as well as a normally on JFET from Infineon. The characterization section of this presentation will be broken up into three different subsections, including static, dynamic, and high temperature switching. I'll begin by discussing the methods for the static characterization, followed by a presentation of the results. A Tektronix 371B curve tracer was used for all the static characterization measurements, where four terminal, also known as Kelvin sensing, was employed to ensure measurement accuracy. The devices were heated from 25 to 200 degrees Celsius with measurements taken in 25 degrees C increments. This figure depicts the heating and temperature se sensing process. The devices, which are all in a TO247 package, are secured to an aluminum plate, which is fixed to a hot plate. A thermocouple is then attached to the aluminum plate beside the device package in order to sense the temperature. I'll now show a plot of the threshold voltage versus temperature for the three silicon carbide MOSFETs and the normally off JFETs. For the silicon carbide MOSFETs, the threshold voltage was determined to be the voltage at which the drain current reached 1 milliamp with the drain and gate terminals of the device shorted together. As shown by the figure, the three silicon carbide MOSFETs have similarly low threshold voltages compared to power silicon MOSFETs. However, as is the case for silicon MOSFETs, they also feature a negative temperature coefficient. The normally off JFET also has a low threshold voltage and a slight negative temperature coefficient. Because of these characteristics, it is recommended to use a negative gate source voltage in the off state in order to avoid any false turn on. Also shown is the pinch off voltage of the normally on JFET from Infineon where it can be seen that it features a similar negative temperature coefficient as the silicon carbide MOSFETs. These JFETs have sufficient margin between their pinch-off voltages and their typical off-state driving voltage of minus 19 volts. This next plot shows the current gain for the silicon carbide BJT and SJT devices versus temperature. The current gain is the ratio of the collector current the output, to the base current, the input, and thus a high value is desirable. As shown by the figure, the silicon carbide devices experience high current gains compared to silicon power BJTs. Also, unlike silicon BJTs, which feature an increase in current gain with increased temperature, the current gain of the silicon carbide BJT and SJT decrease as the temperature is raised. This negative temperature coefficient is due to incomplete ionization of the base dopants at room temperature. Thus, as the temperature is increased, more dopants become, become ionized, which reduces the emitter efficiency, thereby decreasing the current gain of the device. And this negative temperature coefficient of the current gain is a beneficial quality of the silicon carbide BJT because it reduces the risk of thermal runaway and allows for easy pa paralleling of these devices. Shown here is a plot of the specific on resistance versus temperature for all seven silicon carbide devices. The specific on resistance in this work is found by multiplying the measured on resistance by the die area of the device. It is important to look at the specific on resistance when comparing these different devices because, as mentioned previously, the on resistance is related to the size of the device with a lower on resistance associated with a larger size. All of the silicon carbide MOSFETs feature small increases in on resistance with increasing temperature compared to silicon devices, with general electric silicon carbide MOSFET, shown in red, having the lowest temperature dependence, increasing by less than 59% from 25 to 200 degrees Celsius. We then have Infineon's normally on JFET, 
and Genesis SJT. Semi cell to normalize off silicon carbide JFET showed the highest temperature dependence, and this is due to its vertical channel structure. Fairchild silicon carbide BJT demonstrated the lowest on resistance, which can be attributed to the cancellation of the forward voltage drops across the base collector and base emitter junctions. It should also be noted that the on resistance of the silicon carbide BJT and SJT can be plotted because they have negligible collector emitter saturation voltages, unlike that of silicon BJTs or IGBTs. I'll now discuss the dynamic characterization methods and results for these silicon carbide devices. To evaluate the switching performance of these devices, double pulse tests are carried out. As shown by the schematic on the bottom right, these tests use a Schottky diode as the top switch, while the device under test is the bottom switch. An inductor is placed across the freewheeling diode such that when the device under test is on, the current ramps up, as shown by the green waveform in the top left figure. The value of this current, of this load current, is determined by the length of the first gate pulse shown as the red waveform. The pulse length needed to achieve a desired load current for a given DC voltage and inductance can be easily determined from the equation V equals L dIdt. At the end of the first pulse, the device under test is turned off under this load current value. A short second gate pulse can then be applied to capture the turn on switching waveform of the device under the same load current. I'll now go through some of the key components used in the hardware for these double pulse tests. The PCB used for this testing was carefully designed to minimize the parasitics that inhibit the switching performance of these devices. Shown here is the DC voltage connection, bulk capacitors, and several decoupling capacitors. The freewheeling diode, which is a silicon carbide Schottky diode from Cree, is shown in close proximity to the device under test in order to limit the parasitic inductance. The drain source voltage is, test, is, is measured using a high voltage differential probe, and a standard silicon MOSFET gate drive from Ixis is used for all of the silicon carbide devices. This gate driver has a high current capability of 14 amps and a low output impedance. A coaxial current shunt is used for the current sensing in order to minimize parasitic inductance. Since many double pulse test signals are needed to test the switching of these devices under different load current and DC voltage conditions, I developed a LabVIEW code that allows me to store these signals in advance and then quickly retrieve them during testing in order to speed up the dynamic characterization process. This code then programs the function generator with the, desired, with the desired signal. Upon triggering the function generator, the device under test is then switched in the double pulse test hardware that was previously shown. The oscilloscope then captures the switching waveforms, which can then be exported to MATLAB, where an M file is used to compute the switching losses by multiplying the voltage and current waveforms and integrating. M files were also developed in order to measure the switching times and slew rates of the devices. This process can also be applied to various systems. For instance, this test procedure was used for conducting double pulse tests on a high temperature silicon carbide 50 kilowatt converter for an aerospace application. We also employed the same process for testing the hard switching performance of 10 kilovolt silicon carbide MOSFET modules to be used in a medium voltage power electronics building block. The driving schemes used for the different device types are kept similar with the same Ixis gate drive used for all of the devices. A schematic depicting the driving of the silicon carbide MOSFETs is shown here, where an external gate resistance is used to adjust the switching performance of the device. For the silicon carbide BJT, SJT, and normally off JFET, which all require some DC current in the on state, a capacitance is put in parallel to the external gate resistance in order to quickly source and sync current to and from the gate to speed up the switching transients. 
Once the devices are on, the current flowing to the gate is determined by the external gate resistance and driving voltage used. For the normally on JFET, the device is on when no bias is applied to the gate and requires a negative potential across the gate source junction to turn off. A parallel resistor capacitor diode, or RCD, network can be added such that the JFET can be driven at a gate source voltage that is more negative than the reverse breakdown voltage of the gate source diode. These last two driving schemes will be discussed in more detail in the following slides. As mentioned, in the as mentioned, in the on state, the value of the external gate resistance and driving voltage will determine the amount of current flowing to the gate of the device. This results in power being dissipated across the external gate resistance. This loss is considered to be the driving loss. This plot shows the losses determined for a switching frequency of 70 kHz and duty cycle of 50% for several driving voltage and resistor combinations where the driving loss is shown in red and the switching loss is shown in blue. For a fixed external gate resistance, a larger driving voltage results in a significant increase in the driving loss, but a decrease in the switching loss. If instead the external gate resistance value is increased, then the driving voltage is reduced to a reasonable value. In this plot, it can be seen that under these stated operating conditions, the 20 volt 30 ohm combination yields the lowest total power loss. Consequently, it was, de it was decided to proceed with this combination for the driving of the silicon carbide BJT, SJT, and normally off JFET. For the normally on JFET, as mentioned, the device can be driven by applying zero volts to the gate source terminal in the on state and a negative gate voltage in the off state. According to the manufacturer data sheet, the maximum gate source voltage of this JFET is 20 volts. Consequently, an off state voltage of minus 19 volts is used. The resulting turn off, turn on, and total switching energy losses are shown in blue. If instead the resistor capacitor diode network is used, then a more negative off state voltage such as minus 25 volts can be used. This results in a slight reduction in the turn off switching energy, but a more but a more noticeable decrease in the turn on switching energy, therefore giving an overall decrease in the total switching energy loss. This table summarizes the driving conditions used for each of the silicon carbide devices. For the silicon carbide MOSFETs, a series of double pulse tests were performed on each device for external gate resistances ranging from 0 to 10 ohms. The gate resistance value that resulted in the lowest switching, loss, switching energy loss without causing significant ringing was chosen to be the optimal value. As listed in the table, the chosen external gate resistance values for the Cree, Rome, and GE silicon carbide MOSFETs were 2.5 ohms, 0, and 5 ohms, respectively. The internal gate resistance values for each silicon carbide MOSFETs were later measured using an impedance analyzer. These measured values are shown in the table in parentheses. Interestingly, the sum of the internal and external gate resistances for these MOSFETs are all around 7.5 ohms. This plot shows the total switching energy loss of each silicon carbide device versus load current for double pulse tests conducted at a DC voltage of 600 volts. We first have the ROM and GE MOSFET curves, followed by Genesis, SJT, and Fairchild BJT. It can be observed that these bipolar devices are faster than their silicon counterparts and experience almost unipolar-like behavior. We then have Infineon's normally on JFET, Cree's second generation silicon carbide MOSFET, and Semisout's normally off silicon carbide JFET, which showed the lowest switching losses at room temperature, though the driver losses are not included in this plot. For reference, a similarly rated silicon IGBT would have switching losses much greater than 
around 600 and 800 microjoules in the range of 15 to 20 amps. I'll now discuss the high temperature dynamic performance of these devices up to 200 degrees Celsius. This is a look at the setup used for the high temperature dynamic characterization. The same double pulse test board that was shown previously is used for this testing. The device under test is soldered underneath the PCB and is fixed to a hot plate so that only the device under test is heated. A thermocouple is then again used to sense the temperature, and a fan is used to cool the remaining PCB components. This figure shows the turn-on double pulse test waveforms for the Cree silicon carbide MOSFET at temperatures from 25 degrees C, shown as the blue waveforms, to 200 degrees C, shown as the red waveforms. The bottom subplot shows the gate source waveforms, which have been aligned so that the impact of the so that the impact <coughs> of the drain current rise and drain source voltage fall can be observed as the temperature is increased. It is clear that as that there is a decrease in the drain current rise and voltage fall times as the temperature is increased, resulting in a faster turn on process. For the turn-off process, the gate source voltage rate forms were again aligned, as shown in the bottom subplot, so that the influence of the temperature on the voltage rise and current fall could be observed. Looking at the top subplot, there is a clear increase in the delay time as the temperature is increased from 25 to 200 degrees C, as well as an increase in the voltage rise and current fall times. This will result in a slower turn-off transition. From these waveforms, the switching energy losses were computed. This plot shows the switching energy loss versus load current for the double pulse test conducted from 25C, known as the blue curves, to 200 degrees C, degree C, known as the red curves. As expected, the turn on switching energy loss decreases with increased temperature, again due to faster current rise and voltage fault rates. The turn off switching energy on the other hand, increases with increased temperature. The same behavior was seen for all of the silicon carbide MOSFETs. The silicon carbide BJT and SJT double pulse tests were, conduct were also conducted from 25 to 200 degrees C, and the gate source waveforms were also aligned in order to show the impact on the current rise and voltage fall for increasing temperature. As shown by the top subplot, there is a slight decrease in the current rise time as the temperature is increased, which causes the turn on switching energy to reduce with increasing temperature. For the turn off process, as is observed for the silicon carbide MOSFETs, the silicon carbide BJT and SJT experience an increase in the delay time as the temperature is increased. However, unlike the silicon carbide MOSFETs, the voltage rise and current fall times for the silicon carbide BJT and SJT show a small decrease, resulting in a modest decrease in the turn off switching energy as the temperature is raised from 25 to 200 C. This table summarizes the high temperature switching behavior observed for each of the silicon carbide devices. As mentioned, the silicon carbide MOSFETs all experience a decrease in the turn-on switching energy, but an increase in the turn-off switching energy. Consequently, as the temperature is increased from 25 to 200 degrees C, silicon carbide MOSFETs experience small changes in the total switching energy loss. The silicon carbide BJT and SJT also experience a decrease in the turn-on switching energy with increased temperature, so the turn-off switching energy also shows a slight reduction. This results in a net decrease in the total switching energy loss for these devices as the temperature is increased. Unlike the other devices, the silicon carbide normally off JFET features an increase in, the, in its turn on switching energy with increased temperature. This is primarily due to a notable increase in the voltage fall time. 
The turnoff process, however, shows no change as the temperatures increase. As a result, the net switching energy increases with increasing temperature. For the silicon carbide normally on JFET, the turn-on process showed no change with temperature, but the turn-off process revealed a decrease in the turn-off energy. Accordingly, the total switching energy loss of the normally on JFET decreased as the temperature was increased from 25 to 200 degrees C. Based on these results, it can be concluded that the high temperature switching behavior is dependent on the device structure. Now the key characterization results will be summarized, followed by a summary of the overall work. For the silicon carbide MOSFETs, we saw that the on resistance was less temperature sensitive than silicon power MOSFETs, with the on resistance of GE's silicon carbide MOSFET increasing by less than 59% from 25 to 200 degrees Celsius. These MOSFETs also demonstrated good switching performance using a commercial silicon MOSFET gate driver. The silicon BJT and SJT showed high current gains with a negative temperature coefficient, which allows for easier paralleling of these devices and also reduces the risk of thermal runaway. The silicon carbide BJT also featured very low specific on resistance. It's also shown that these devices are faster than traditional silicon power BJTs and then demonstrated almost unipolar-like behavior. The, no the on-resistance of the silicon carbide normally off JFET showed the greatest temperature sensitivity, increasing by about 340 percent from 25 to 200 degrees C. However, this device showed the lowest total switching energy loss at room temperature when driver losses weren't considered. The silicon carbide normally on JFET showed similar specific on resistance and switching losses as the silicon carbide as the silicon carbide MOSFET. It's also shown that the switching losses of these devices could be reduced by driving the devices with a more negative gate source voltage. Once again, the goal of this work was to characterize various types of state-of-the-art silicon carbide transistors to 200 degrees C. For the silicon carbide MOSFETs, five different devices from three different manufacturers were fully characterized. In particular, the parameters that were explored were threshold voltage, on resistance, drain leakage current, junction capacitances, internal gate resistance, and switching losses. The characterization results of three of these five silicon carbide MOSFETs were shown in this presentation, though the other results can be found in this ECCE paper. Other devices, such as silicon carbide BJT, SJT, normally off, and normally on JFETs, were also characterized, and the driving of each type of device was evaluated. More details can be found in this EPE paper. These various devices were also characterized up to 200 degrees C in order to evaluate their high temperature performance, the results of which can be found in this IMAPS Journal of Microelectronics and Electronic Packaging paper. The conclusions and future work will now be presented. For the static characterization, the increase in on resistance from temperatures of 25 to 200 degrees C for these devices ranged from 59% for GE silicon carbon MOSFET to 340% for semi felt silicon carbide normally off JFET. Thus, this, in addition to the low leakage currents of these devices, makes them suitable for high temperature applications, such as in HEVs, more electric aircrafts, or downhole systems, where ambient temperatures are high and the cooling is limited. The silicon carbide BJT is especially useful for applications requiring low conduction losses. In terms of the dynamic characterization, the silicon carbide BJT measured, measured rise and fall times of approximately 10 and 20 nanoseconds, respectively, which are comparable to the switching speed of unipolar devices. These silicon carbide transistors demonstrated fast switching 
fast switching, similar to that seen for silicon power MOSFETs, as well as high voltage capability, where typically slower silicon IGBTs are used. For the driving, higher voltage swings are required for the silicon carbide MOSFETs due to their modest transconductance. Additionally, the parasitics in the board layout must also be minimized in order due to the height and due to the high speed, high power switching of these devices. However, it was also shown that the, shown in this work that a standard silicon power MOSFET gate driver could be used to successfully drive all of these silicon carbide devices. The high temperature double pulse test revealed that all of these silicon carbide devices showed changes of less than 15% in their total switching energy loss from 25 to 200 degrees C. This further demonstrates the use of these devices in high temperature applications. For the future work, we would like to continue characterizing state-of-the-art 1200 volt silicon carbide transistors. Companies such as ST Microelectronics, Sumitomo Electric, and United Silicon Carbide are joining the market with silicon carbide MOSFETs and JFETs. New generation devices are also available from companies such as General Electric. It is also of interest to evaluate higher power devices, including higher voltage discrete components, as well as higher power modules, as well as high power modules. Genesis and Cree have 1.7 kV silicon carbide transistors that are commercially available, and GE also manufactures 1.7 kV silicon carbide MOSFETs. We have also characterized several 10 kilovolt silicon carbide power modules for use in a medium voltage system. Since double pulse tests can be time consuming and expensive, it is of interest to find a way to predict the dynamic characteristics of a device from its static parameters. We are developing a model that would allow users to determine the switching performance of a silicon carbide device based on parameters found in the manufacturer data sheet. This model would allow would be useful for preliminary evaluation of these devices in the early converter or system level design stages. We would also like to perform similar characterization on gallium nitride transistors for manufacturers such as Transform, Panasonic, and EPC. It could also be of great interest to compare the static and dynamic performances of 650 volt gallium nitride and silicon carbide devices. I'd also like to acknowledge the following individuals and companies for all of their support and guidance throughout the course of this research. Thank you very much for your attention. I'd be happy to entertain any comments or questions.